Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney and today is Wednesday, May 25th. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Here on 3 News Now, we bring you the stories that matter most to you. These are the stories that you are clicking on, reading and sharing. And the story that matters most to much of the country today is what happened last night in Uvalde, Texas. We're continuing to get more information about a mass shooting that happened yesterday where an 18-year-old took the lives of at least 19 children and two adults. And today we know some of those names as those names are beginning to come out. So I'll tell you what information we have at this time. Uzziah Garcia is one of the children whose lives was lost. Reporters heard from his grandfather, Manny Renfro. He was eight years old, and his grandfather said that he was the sweetest little boy, and no, he is not just saying that because it was his grandchild. There's also Ava Morales, who was a fourth grade teacher, 44 years old, a loving mother and a wife. She had been in the district for 17 years, lost her life defending those children's lives, doing what she could to save them from the shooter yesterday. Javier Lopez is another child who passed away in the shooting yesterday, and that child had been looking forward to a summer of swimming, but that will not happen now. Lisa Garza, who is 54 years old, is the cousin of that child, and she said that he was a 10-year-old little boy enjoying life, not knowing that that tragedy was about to happen and that it's taken a toll on the family. Another child Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez, 10 years old, was a third grader at Robb Elementary. Her dad spent a lot of the afternoon on Tuesday looking for her and didn't have answers for her immediately. And then they found out that she was one of the people, one of the 19 students killed in that shooting. We also know from her family that she was in the same classroom as her cousin, who was also shot and killed, and the name of that child has not yet been released. There's also Rogelio Torres, and I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these names improperly. That child was initially reported missing by his father, but had been confirmed. And the boy's father, Frederico Torres, said he rushed to the school and waited several hours and had to submit a DNA test to confirm the identity of his son. Another child, Elihana Cruz Torres, a softball player, was killed also just 10 years old. Today, there was a press conference at around 1.30 p.m. where Governor Greg Abbott called the shooter a demented person and said that Uvalde had been shaken to its core. A quote from Governor Abbott, families are broken apart, hearts are forever shattered, all Texans are grieving the people of Uvalde, and people are rightfully angry about what has happened. What we do know from the officials today is that the gunman didn't have any criminal or mental health history. But the governor did say it's possible he may have had a juvenile record that wasn't showing up. And in that press conference, Governor Abbott downplayed calls for stricter gun laws after the shooting. And he mentioned the number of shootings in large metropolitan areas and other states. And in that, suggested that gun control legislation wouldn't stop tax like hap what happened in Uvalde. But one person who wasn't standing for that is Beto O'Rourke. He disrupted that press conference. He is running against Abbott for governor of Texas. He also was recently a Democratic presidential nominee in 2020, and he disrupted that press conference, and he laid blame at lawmakers, saying that they are responsible for the deaths of the 19 children. Now, following that, the lieutenant governor of Texas asked people to put off talking about, quote, politics, and said for people to put the families first who lost loved ones in the Uvalde shooting. But a lot of people seem to disagree with that sentiment, this time around. I'll tell you what Ohio politicians are saying. Governor Mike DeWine talked about how he and his wife are heartbroken over the tragedy and said that the last place that we should be afraid to send our children and grandchildren is school. He said school safety and law enforcement intelligence gathering are key efforts within the Ohio Department Public of Safety and they would offer any assistance to Governor Abbott and the Texas law enforcement that they need. And then he went on to say that Fran and he would keep the victims and their family in their prayers and asking all Ohioans to do the same. Now, the person running against him for governor of Ohio, former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley, said that her thoughts are with the victims, families, and loved ones. And then she went on to say this. No one should have to live in fear of becoming victims to deadly shootings like these as we go about our lives at school, at the grocery store, 
anywhere. And then she said, we need leaders who are willing to do something. Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown for Ohio said he was at a loss and that the inaction of a handful of politicians in Washington and state legislatures continues to cost lives mass shooting after mass shooting. Republican Senator Rob Portman, who will not be running for re-election in the fall, said that his heart goes out to the families of the victims in this horrible tragedy in Uvalde. He said, our nation mourns for the innocent children, teacher, and all those affected by this senseless act of violence. Now, one of the people who is running for that open seat is Representative Tim Ryan, and he said that Andrea, his wife, and he are praying for the Uvalde community and the innocent young lives taken from us in another senseless tragedy. Our babies are being killed by gun violence, and we are failing them. We have to do something. Our kids should be safe at school. Someone running against Tim Ryan, J.D. Vance, who was running on the Republican ticket for Senate, said this. Christ have mercy. Please say a prayer for these poor kids and their families. And our Cleveland mayor, Justin Bibb, said at the time, 15 children dead. That has since been updated to 19. He said the soul of our nation is broken. Cleveland grieves with Uvalde, Texas, and all those in mourning this evening. Now, it's not just limited to politicians who were saying something about this. Actor Matthew McConaughey is from the Uvalde area. That's his hometown. And what he said, he called mass shootings an epidemic we can control following what happened this shooting, by the way, in Texas yesterday is the deadliest U.S. school shooting since a gunman killed 20 children and six adults at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. That was in December of 2012. So McConaughey called upon Americans to ask themselves. Here's a quote from he, what he posted on social media. What is it that we truly value? How do we repair the problem? What small sacrifices can we individually take today to preserve a healthier and safer nation, state, and neighborhood tomorrow? He went on to say, we cannot exhale once again, make excuses, and accept these tragic realities as the status quo. As Americans, Texans, mothers and fathers, it's time we reevaluate and renegotiate our wants from our needs. We have to rearrange our values and find a common ground above this devastating American reality that has tragically become our children's issue. Other people also reacting, you know, the NBA playoffs are underway. And Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr said in a speech ahead of Game 4 yesterday against the Dallas Mavericks that he would not be talking about basketball. He said nothing important had happened with his team in the last six hours and that basketball questions don't matter. But what he went on to say was, when are we going to do something? That was the question that he had, and he was visibly holding back tears at this point. He said he's tired of getting up on the podium and, quote, offering condolences to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm tired of moments of silence. Enough. And then he talked about the Buffalo mass shooting that happened less than two weeks ago where 10 people were killed at a supermarket in a predominantly black community. And he said this, I'm fed up. I've had enough. We're going to play the game tonight, but I want every person here, every person listening to this to think about your own child or grandchild, mother or father, sister, brother. How would you feel if this happened to you today? Also in the sports world, Cleveland Browns defensive end Miles Garrett did not stay quiet on social media. He talked about gun control laws in the context of the leaked draft opinion that would overturn Roe versus Wade if it does prove to be the majority opinion from the Supreme Court of the United States. I'll read you what he wrote with the expletives excerpted. He said, so an 18-year-old kid is legally within his rights to buy multiple assault rifles and a pistol online, going on to kill 21 or more people, while a woman in the States can't even have full autonomy of her body in the U.S.? Expletive. Just doesn't make sense. It's pathetic. This isn't the 17 or 1800s. We aren't taking our muskets out of the closet to defend our country. We aren't Minutemen. No other country has near the amount of mass shootings as we do. And we say the same expletive every single time. Prayers and condolences that aren't bringing those loved ones back or easing any of those broken hearts. So a lot of people taking a different, very very emotional approach to what happened in Texas yesterday, calling for change on lawmakers. Now, in an update on something that happened here in Northeast Ohio, Lake Catholic has released its findings on what happened with the student accused of wearing a swastika during a lacrosse playoff game against Orange High School. And what it says that it found from its investigation is that a senior on the team was trying to play a prank 
and had drawn a swastika on his hand and then pressed it on the arms of two other teammates and also on the calf of a third teammate. Now, the people that had it pressed on their arms saw it and removed it, but the person who had it pressed on his calf is said to have not realized that it was there. Lake Catholic High School is saying that this person is taking responsibility for what happened and that that senior was not allowed to participate in graduation and wouldn't be given his diploma until he finished counseling related to information about the Jewish heritage and also community service hours. There's also more information there about some of the comments that were made about possible slurs. There was an adult team photographer who did use profane language. However, it was not confirmed that they were slurs against the Jewish community. And that person will no longer be working with the school in any official capacity. And also, as first reported by our investigative reporter, Marissa Sines, the boys lacrosse head coach, Chris Hastings, and one of the assistant coaches had resigned. Now today there was a Cuyahoga County health briefing related to COVID-19 and this is as Lorraine and Ashtabula counties are now listed as having high community levels of COVID-19. So the message here is caution. Cleveland Clinic Chief Medical Operations Officer Dr. Robert Willie told 3 News a Manny Abraham earlier this week that things that are being seen in Michigan and the Northeast and surrounding states will probably come to Ohio meaning more spread. So we will likely see more hospitalizations related to COVID-19 and a lot of people getting infected. And for a lot of people, we know more people getting infected with COVID-19 now than when the pandemic started. But there is good news on the vaccine front. Pfizer says it will be seeking emergency use authorization for a three-dose course of the COVID vaccine for ages six months to five years old. This is the latest study showing that its vaccine, which is one-tenth the dose for adults, was well tolerated and more than 80% effective. So that's a higher effective rate than we had seen previously and something important for this age group. Now let's shift to some positive news to close things out today. We have a story from our reporter, Lindsay Buckingham, and it talks about a Cleveland Heights woman who overcame the odds, beating cancer twice getting married and having a miracle pregnancy. Her name is 32 year old Allie Engler and it was in 2016 she noticed a lump on the back of her neck. She worked in the nursing field so she talked with some doctors and they, they thought maybe just a sprain. It wasn't a sprain. It turned out to be a rare cancer and that was what got her and her then boyfriend Tommy back together. She said he came with her to some appointments and he basically never left. So together with aggressive chemo and radiation 10 months later Allie thought she was in the clear and the two got married in 2017, but then there was another setback in 2018 with a spot on her lung and low chances of survival. But again, Allie overcame the odds and then found out when she wasn't sure that she would be able to get pregnant, that they were pregnant and gave birth to that baby on St. Patrick's Day. And that baby's name is Peter, named after her oncologist, Dr. Peter Anderson. It's an incredible story. Lindsay does a beautiful job telling it. You're gonna wanna go to WKYC.com and check that out for something to smile about today. Something else that is some good news to share with you, Miles Garrett and his Cleveland Browns teammates, Johnny Stanton IV and Wyatt Teller will be playing in a Dungeons and Dragons charity game. That'll be tomorrow. Now the physical event is sold out. They'll also be performing or playing the game, kind of performing, playing the game with a comedian, a tabletop streamer, and the person who owns a Dungeon Dragons themed TikTok page, Brandon Tharp, with over 300,000 followers. So this will be streamed live on the Cantrip Cast's Twitch channel, and all of that is on WKYC.com. The event is called Rolling for Red Nose Day, and it's raising money for Red Nose Day, which is an annual charity day that is aimed to end child poverty, and Red Nose Day is tomorrow May 26th. So if you want to catch that, we've got all the information for that on WKYC.com. That's it for your three news now update today for Wednesday, May 25th. And I'll see you back here tomorrow with more three news now.